What's up guys, CP Modi here back with another video and today we're here with a video that I've always wanted to make for quite some time but never really had the resources to actually go ahead and do. And that's to take a look at the difference between retail CPUs and samples that a lot of us reviewers and also to stores get to build up some really interesting systems and to see whether or not there's a difference between store-bought CPUs and sample CPUs to see whether you as a consumer is really losing out. Now up until recently this has really not been possible for me as the channel itself is not actually big enough for Intel or AMD or any of them really to bother with us and again up until recently I hadn't had access to a manufacturer specifically provided CPU again up until recently. So back when the CPUs for the Coffee Lake series launched I actually got my hands on Intel supplied CPUs for a retail store to actually build up some really interesting systems to also to launch at the same time as the new Coffee Lake CPU family. I managed to get them in for a day and do some testing and since then those CPUs had gone into the system were on display at events like PAX and other things and shipped all around Australia apparently and now they've come back finally and I've managed to get my hands on them for a couple days to go ahead and do some tests between well Coffee Lake chips that was produced and sent to a store as a retail offering or rather a uh, sample offering and then also to compare them to some off-the-shelf retail parts now yes to be clear this is not a Coffee Lake chip so for those of you going to point out no the one that I'm waving around here isn't a copy like part. But either way, I did get my hands on them to go ahead and actually do some testing and see whether or not there is actually a difference. But before we do go further into this video, unfortunately, no, I didn't get my hands on an AMD offering to actually compare, mainly because I didn't get the Zen stuff at launch, and also too, well, I don't have them here now, and I also too, unfortunately, don't have a uh, sample from AMD, so I can't test over on the AMD side. But you can definitely guarantee as soon as I do get my hands on some AMD offerings, or a whole bunch of other offerings, I'm definitely going to be doing a massive showdown between retail chips and also to sample supply chips from multiple generations, multiple different manufacturers. It's going to be an awesome showdown, so do stay tuned for that. But that does lead us to the question, why on earth would manufacturers want to send retail and also to reviewers better performing chips, when in reality, the reviewers aren't the one actually buying the chips? And the answer is pretty simple graphs. Most of us out there who are watching these kind of videos, let's face it, we're tech people and we absolute love doing the research and finding out what's going to be the better part for the job we want to do. And if a product is higher in a graph, chances are we're higher and more likely to go ahead and buy those products. I've definitely done this myself. I've gone online, I've looked at the benchmarks and whatever's been at the top is what I've gone ahead and bought, usually if the price is also too not too bad. Now on the GPU side, this is really easy to illustrate. For example, if I I have a graph right here of a whole bunch of GTX 1180 Ti's and let's say the MSI card is at the top. There's a very high chance that a lot of us are going to go ahead and just buy that MSI card if all of them are about the same price because the MSI card still being based on that GTX 1180 core is going to be performing slightly better than all of the others out there so you're going to be seeing a slightly better performance and if for example a manufacturer wants to get a little bit dirty in their marketing scheme they might go ahead and send me a copy copy of the card that has a better tweaked bio, so it performs better, thus knocking MSI off the top, thus getting you guys to potentially buy that particular card. Now with that being said, a lot of manufacturers don't want to go ahead and do this because they're just going to get exposed on the internet really, really quickly, and it will be kind of obvious if the graphs are showing that there's a 20% performance increase going to this other manufacturer, and in reality everyone's buying them and there's not much of a difference, it's going to be super obvious there. But with that being said, graphs is usually one of the main reasons why a CPU manufacturer, GPU manufacturer, or anyone would rather send high performing parts to the uh, reviewers and also to retailers because you're going to see graphs like this where the highest option is usually going to be also to the highest bought product. And again, this can also to be applied back to the CPU side. For example, especially on the CPU side where things are 1%, maybe 2%, maybe even 5% difference between one CPU and another CPU, being able to edge out your competition ever so slightly and get ever so slightly higher in that graph can again mean the difference between a lot of units selling and not as many units selling. And let's face it, most of us out there aren't exactly going to be running hardcore benchmarks. As soon as we build our new computer, we might run a stability test. We may not even do 
that, but we're usually just jumping into our favorite games, running the settings at sort of the highest we can go without sort of not going too high and playing our games there. And again, this is completely fair. A lot of users just don't have the time or the skills or even want to bother doing a whole bunch of tests. And let's face it, little John, little Timmy, or whoever's out there building their brand new computer for the first time is not gonna be wanting to spend 10 hours benchmarking their system to find out whether that their system numbers match exactly as what they saw on YouTube or in a review it's really just not going to be done. Even I don't do that with the builds that I do. I might do a review of a product, but as soon as I'm done with that, I never benchmark a system as detailed as I do when I do these kind of tests. And let's face it, a 1% to 2% difference isn't really going to be the end of the world if we've just built a computer. But it is the end of a world if a retailer can't get their product to the top of the graph or the SKUs or anything like that that they are trying to reach. Now, another idea to this whole golden chip scenario is because Intel or AMD is supplying these chips they're more likely to take the golden samples or the center of the wafers and send them out to reviewers. Now, in theory, this is actually a really good speculation. Because you're Intel, because you're AMD, you're going to take the best of the best, pick it out of the middle and give it to whoever's reviewing it. But after doing some research and taking a look around the internet and also to talking to a couple other people who actually own these particular chips we may not actually see this as the case. Now for years, engineering samples from both Intel and also to the AMD side have been known for having a ton of problems here and there, whether that will be memory controllers, clock speed issues where they just can't overclock then a certain point, and many more, which could really do a whole video about these problems, but there has been a lot of well-documented issues when it comes to engineering sample types of parts. And relatively speaking, Intel really doesn't have that much of an idea what they're doing when they first start producing a new generation and a new architecture compared to when they do release their full fat versions for the public. So when a Intel confidential chip comes out or an AMD pre-release chip comes out, a lot of time the actual yields on the wafers that they're making are super low. There may be only a few actually made out of a whole wafer and in reality when it comes to actually a mainstream launch, even a few months down the line, they're getting a lot more out of the wafers which means they're getting a lot better chips out of the particular methods they are using. Now this can translate to a lot of things, but just to take a quick look at it, it's really not making that much of a difference between what a retail unit would be and also to a supply unit. Now the differences between the retail chips that are launched really early and a new one can be actually pretty interesting and I've actually had this experience myself. For instance, the Intel Core i7 7700K that I've been using for benchmarking for quite some time isn't exactly the same 7700K that I used back when I first did these tests. In fact, the original 7700K that I used was bought on launch day or at least I didn't buy it, the person who bought it bought it on launch day and they've let me use it ever since. And recently we actually upgraded to a new 7700K and I've seen ever so slightly better performance out of that guy even though it's exactly the same chip in the same motherboard, same components, same settings, everything the same, we've seen slightly better performance. This is down to the fact that the better wafers that are coming out say a year into a product release are going to be giving things like better overclocks at lower voltages and ever so slightly temperature decreases and overall a better and more more stable unit, whereas things that came out early are going to be again a little bit more on the sketchy side as originally they may not have been as good. Also two things like PCIe controllers, RAM management and all those kind of things are going to be ever so slightly better thanks to the fact that the manufacturers have had time to retool and re-engineer the way that they're actually making these uh, CPUs and wafers to go ahead and account for any issues that did come up when it came to manufacturing. So the theory of the actual original chips being cherry picked isn't really the case seeing that if you just wait a year into product release, you could see much better performance. In fact, for example, the old 7700K that I was testing could overclock to 4.4 gigahertz, and the new one can go up to 4.45 gigahertz at exactly the same power requirements and exactly the same heat output. Sure, it's not exactly the world's most biggest difference, 4.4 versus 4.45, but it is still there that it is getting ever so slightly better performance. Though with that being said, there is still exceptions out there. There have been times in releases way ago or I guess not so way ago but there have been releases out there where manufacturers may have been actually cherry picking some CPUs and the actual retail parts weren't as good. But with that being said enough talking speculating looking at things that may or may not be let's go ahead and do some actual testing for ourselves. So for today's video we grabbed ourselves an Intel Core i5-8400 that was released at the launch time. So this is the sample that I made uh, this video right there which will be linked down below if it didn't pop up there 
basically this is my original i5 8400 that I go did go ahead and test and this was again the sample from Intel for a retail store to create some systems take to events and show on display for the latest generation of Intel parts and then after that I picked up an Intel Core i5 8400 to see what kind of a difference we were getting on that side this is a full retail box that was bought in January of 2018 so with that being said let's go ahead and take a look at some numbers and here is our gaming performance and well there's basically no difference in the gaming front. Don't get me wrong, there is definitely some differences in games and there's definitely a lot of blows being traded between the uh, retail chip and also to the sample chip, but to be honest with you, they're more down to the differences in the different game runs and also to just general CPU variants rather than the retail chip being better or the sample chip being better. So on the gaming side, you're really not seeing any performance difference between retail and also to sample. Then we jump over to the synthetic side and it was basically the same story. Again, both the retail chips and the supply chips were performing about the same with some variants here and there, but again, the variances that we did notice more come down to run-to-run -run differences and also to the actual differences in each chips, thanks to the fact that no two chips are ever produced exactly the same and, well, there's not really ever a difference there. And at the end of the day, a lot of these myths and ideas and I guess these kind of things that the internet does like to label now as fake news seems to come from dishonest media and also to fanboyism, from reviewers skewing reviews views in favour of their sponsors or fanboys getting all butt hurt that their favourite brand was ever so slightly beaten out by a competitor, there is always a reason just to say that they got a golden chip and kind of just dismiss it off as well the reviewers getting a better chip. Now to be clear, the numbers that I did run today can easily be repeated by you guys at home. All you need to do is grab those particular chips and those settings that we did mention up in the review numbers there, or rather the uh, benchmark numbers right there, and you'll see that max everything out and you'll get exactly the same numbers or at least very similar numbers because again, run to run, test to test, system to system, they're going to be ever so slightly different. So I guess there we have it. Thanks all for watching and let me know down in that comment section if you were expecting to see such a close numbers. Personally, I was actually expecting to see the CPU that came out in the public release to beat it out. Thanks to the fact again, Intel and also to I guess AMD as a subsequent there, also to have a lot more time to go ahead and just work out what their CPUs are doing and make better chips. If you want to go ahead and check out our 84 video or 8400 video rather they're in the description box and also too if you want to pick up an 8400 from intel again linked all down there thanks all for watching and i'll catch you all in the next one